From Bald Delway to Pale Dekutin, every main character develops new Beyblades, new gimmicks, or even new stadiums. So does that make them a cheater? Whether or not you think Beyblade is a sport or a game, either way, you could still cheat. There's only a very few rules when it comes to an anime battle though. Um, you just launch your bay and, you know, let it spin? Nah, I'm just kidding guys. But one of the basic rules is to make sure that your Beyblade is spinning and is the last one spinning in the stadium. The proper way to win, of course, is to get a spin finish, ring out finish, or more importantly, that burst finish. I don't even think the Beyblade has to be from the same season. Heck, I don't even know why they put this circle all around the stadium and in every tournament. It's not like Bald or any of the other characters stay within it. As a matter of fact, why is there a circle inside of the stadium? It's not like we get more points if there's a burst that happens within that smaller circle. Although that would be cool. Nani? Most of the main characters are treat it like legends and do come up with a lot of the technology that's involved in Beyblade. It doesn't seem like any of the Beyblade characters have to abide by any standardization of the parts. And what do I mean by that? Well, obviously they do get to modify their Beyblades. But Beyblade that I hear you say. Innovating Beyblades and making their own Beyblade isn't a bad thing. It's innovation. They're just making new stuff for us to enjoy. But truth of the matter is, both Iger and Ball added a burst stopper to their layers. That's literally one of the biggest modifications that you can do. It, it prevents one of the main functions of winning or losing a match from happening and that's of course that burst finish granted it's not impossible to burst these kinds of beyblades but it does make it tremendously more difficult and aside from taking performance enhancement drugs the use of technology is a way to cheat that's just one side of the coin because as we all know every main character does have their own particular technique when it comes to launching from Bolt's aerial boost all the way to Iger's 360 spin launch, or even when being in tournaments. Remember that Dante, or Drum Koryu, was the first to create an electric driver for the Burst series. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's like putting a remote control on a soccer ball. That's taking Beyblade and technology and meshing it up together to make something unique, new, and given the fact that it goes both left and right spin, this Beyblade driver made Dante and Dragon the most powerful team. And the fact that he actually used Delta's layer in order to win a tournament back in Beyblade Burst Rise, meaning that all bladers have the choice to do the same thing, but they don't. Dante became so strong, not only by training, ah! Wait, ah! but by introducing new parts, new gimmicks, and an ability so powerful that others had to actually adapt with an infinite burst lock system. Not only that, Gwyn Reynolds even went so far as to add another layer of anti-burst protection to those layers. Such villainy in Beyblade. But is it cheating? Cheating is basically gaining an unfair advantage over your opponent. Let me explain what I mean. In Season 1 of Beyblade Burst, we do get to see Vault experiment with so many different kinds of launches. One of his most powerful ones, which is the aforementioned aerial boost. And it literally gives him a boost. It gives him increased momentum because of the distance traveled by the Beyblade. This gave Vault such a dramatic boost that even Louie decided to do it too. Now in Beyblade Burst God, that's when things started to get a lot more heavy when it comes to the gimmicks. Starting from episode 1, Raul made a drastic change to Valkyrie or Valdriac. Now I don't think it's what inspired many others to do the same, but we did see Beyblades go in a direction where a lot more customization could happen and a lot more gimmicks could be added, along with the Beyblade Burst Cho Z or Beyblade Burst Turbo Season, in which even Shu had to adapt to all the changes that were going on, leading him to also add Burst Stoppers to Spriggan. I've talked about it before in the channel, the fact that some of these Beyblade battles look like they are fixed, where some of the Beyblade characters that we know should have won lose, and some of the ones that we know should have lost one. Not only that, but it's revealed in the manga for Beyblade Burst Sparking or Beyblade Burst Surge that all the legendary bladers got together and conspired to make a tournament. A tournament in order to bring down Lady Valhalla, which was climbing the legendary ladder quicker than anybody ever did. And this of course was because of his new Beyblade, First Uranus, which was a whole new blading system. But what did the legends do? Well, that's right, all the main characters ended up copying his style of Beyblade. That along with his flair and determination to be the best must be a great great motivation to start evolving the Beyblades as much as he did with Lucifer. In Beyblade Burst Anime, it does get even worse though because Bale Dekuten blatantly copies his opponent's special abilities, whether it was from Fafnir and his spin-stealing rubber Longinus with its heavy metal dragon blades and Valkyrie. He copied special attributes in order to make his Beyblade a lot more powerful. Not only that, with the introduction of the DB system, that is, the Dynamite Battle Launcher and the Dynamite Battle Stadium, which both are stronger 
and Bigger, respectively, gave him a clear edge over the rest of the competition, once again motivating everybody else to adopting the new Dynamite Battle system. And of course we see Rashad Goodman being the king of copycat himself, copying Valtoy's Beyblade twice and finally settling for the greatest Raphael. And so, is it innovation or cheating? I consider Beyblade to be a modern target sport akin to archery, bowling, and ping pong. And when thinking about Beyblade in these terms, as a sport, then we can clearly see whether they are actually cheating or not. Take archery for example, where the archer's score is still dependent on the archer's skill. Each archer is equipped with their very own bow and their very own arrows that are unique to them, mostly having standards for the arrow length and diameter, which is obviously not like Beyblade, but if it were treated as such, you could clearly see that by bringing your own Beyblade or your own launcher, you're just bringing something that's unique to you. So not necessarily cheating, whereas if it was treated like ping pong, there would actually be somebody that had to check even the consistency of the materials they use so that everybody is using basically the same things, whether that is the same rubbers, plastics, and metals. And in a sense, they kind of do that when they let each other see each other's Beyblade in the beginning of every match. And so maybe they're not cheating by making new parts, because as it seems, everybody else can too. There are other side characters who've been along for the ride and have evolved their Beyblade too, along with the villains and antagonists of the Beyblade Burst series. Okay, so that's it. Nobody's cheating? Not quite. Because if we push this to the extreme, meaning if we were to get Bale Dekuten to travel back in time and go into Beyblade Burst Season 1, I'm sure we could all agree that his Beyblade system is far more superior than anything. And had he brought that to the tournament, he would have won it. No questions asked. But then at that point in time, I think he would be cheating. I think, and I may be wrong here, that the only reason we don't call it cheating is because we see a progression. Whereas, if we see an abrupt change like that, where the Beyblade is bigger and heavier, well then it's fair to say then that that Beyblade has an unfair advantage. A bit like cheating. And I guess that's my conclusion. At the end of the day, they're not necessarily cheating, as there's no stated rules as to which Beyblades must battle which, and what kind of a launch or position you might have while launching. And that is actually a reason why I believe that we'll never actually see a fair comparison between all the bladers. And that's because they're not all using the same Beyblade. And let's remember that in the real world, Beyblade tournaments work a little bit differently. And there are definitely more rules when it comes to a WBO tournament. The way we stand, the way we launch, and what type of launcher we use. The biggest rules are regarding what kind of Beyblade you use and its manufacturer. Whether it's a Hasbro attack or Tommy, that's okay. But you cannot use a fake Beyblade to participate in a WBO tournament. And I can't say I ever won a WBO tournament. And that's because the competition is so tough. There could be smaller kids that are way better than you. But then again, they might have watched my video on the three subtle ways you can cheat in Beyblade. I've linked that down in the description and right here on the screen. So let me know what you think. I want to thank you for watching and I want to thank our Baykotsky members. Thanks for being there. And I'll see you on the next video.